Well, unfortunately, no matter how hard I tried, it just wasn't happening on St John's. I think the reason why it wasn't happening is because there wasn't enough anglers. So as soon as I was moving around like I did yesterday, I was moving the fish off back to my original swim last night and I ended up just pushing the fish away again. But the beauty with linear fisheries is there isn't just one lake here, there's seven lakes here. So I got up nice and early this morning, come for a drive around with a bucket, spoke to a few of the guys, and I've eventually sailed on Brazenose 1. Now the reason why I've gone on here, first of all, it's doing bites, it's busy, it's a lot busier than the other lakes, and I think the angling pressure is keeping the fish moving around. I fished in this exact peg a couple of weeks ago and had a really good result. Not only that as well, the stock of Brazenose 1 is absolutely phenomenal. Now I'm, I hazard a guess there's between 18 and 24 fish in here, over 40 pound up to the lake record which is over 50. It's the only day ticket lake on the complex now that holds a 50 pounder. I've got 24 hours of the session left to go so I've come over to here and hopefully I can pull something out of the bag. So I'm going to get myself set up now back out onto the same area that I was fishing last week and fingers crossed I can pull a couple out of the bag. So I'm all set up now and got the rods out over on Brazenose 1. Now, in terms of tactics, I've kept it exactly the same as what I was doing on St. John's. And it would have been the same no matter what lake I would have gone to on the complex. I always fish the same way. And just because it hasn't happened over on St. John's, it doesn't mean that I'm going to come over onto Brazenose or one of the other lakes and fish any differently. I know that that method and that tactic that I use, if there's a fish to be caught, there's a good chance that I'm going to catch one. But I've mentioned quite a lot recently um, that it seems like autumns nowadays, uh, certainly in the past sort of four to five years, just aren't what autumns used to be. And it's now more of a case of such small windows of opportunities that you've got to make the most of. Whereas before it used to be, you know, the same old thing, the autumn harvest, you just go fishing. It's the autumn, leaves are falling from the trees and you're going to catch loads and loads of fish. But that simply isn't the case now. Now the weather that we've had for the past few days sky high pressure, no wind at all, bright nights. It's just the worst possible weather that you can have. And no matter how many fish are in these venues or any venue up and down the country, if the weather isn't right, you're simply not gonna catch them. And I'm hoping by coming over onto Brazenose One, I can sort of salvage the session if you like. Like I say, there's still a lot of big fish in this lake. The reason why I personally feel that it was a lot harder as well was because of the lack of anglers on there, which is always the case at this time of year, but coming over onto Brazenose One, I had to wait a little bit to get in this peg, but it's full up with anglers. There's lots of leads, there's lots of noise, the fish are constantly moving, and it just makes the fish a little bit easier to catch when the weather isn't as good as what it should be. Going into the night, I'm gonna stick down to fishing on the bottom, just like I did on St. John's. Now, the reason why I'm gonna to stick to fishing on the bottom, even though the pressure is very, very high, and probably there is a lot of fish spending a lot of time up off of the bottom, the obvious option would be to chuck a zig out, but I've done it for so many years, whether it be on the linear complex or other lakes that I've fished, and all I've ever done from doing it, caught a lot of fish, but they've never ever been the big ones. Now, the past couple of years on Linear, I've almost refused to chuck a zig out. And the reason why is because them fish are big because they eat. This is the time of year, albeit the windows of opportunity are only small, but if you're gonna catch a big one, it's gonna be now and it's gonna be down on the bottom. The other week when I was in this peg, 23 fish, six over 30, three over 40 pan. There's a lot of big fish in here. I always set myself a little bit of a target no matter what lake I'm fishing. This lake has a 50 pounder and I firmly believe that the only way I'm gonna catch that fish or stand myself in the best possible chance of catching that fish is fishing down on the bottom. So I'm gonna bring them in in about five or 10 minutes time, clip them up, make sure everything's perfect before it gets dark, as I always do, fresh hook baits on, back onto the spot, another sort of eight or 10 spawns over the top and I'm hoping and praying that that is gonna be my key to getting a brazen nose one carp.
Well, I'm into a fish. I've seen a few. It's quite a bright night tonight. I've seen a few showing over the area. And uh, the guy to my left just had one. And I was just sort of starting to think, I wonder if they venture a little bit past him and decide to have a little feed on me. And uh, yeah, the night is still young and I'm into a carp. So the move has definitely paid off. I'm gonna concentrate on trying to get this one in because it'd be a major result to get one in the bag. After spending a couple of frustrating nights on St John's, it would be a major result to get one in the bag. It's out in front of me now, so I'm gonna concentrate on getting this one in. And hopefully, there'll be a carp in the net. Having a good old scrap. Well, the beauty with it being so bright and flat calm is you can actually see clearly where your lead's landing. So it makes getting back out onto the spot, well, I say spot, the area that I'm fishing, very, very easy at night because you can see where things are landing. So it's not like we've got to rush and get one in before the light phase because it's going to stay like this all night. And I know for a fact I've had to get him back on the spot. Right, the leader not just gone onto the rod. So I know he's about four rod lengths out. He's not a massive one, but here's a carp. There he is. Come up. Let's be having you in. It's a nice looking fish to be fair. Come on. It's looking ready. I'm gonna grab the old net. net. There he is. Come on. Make that move worthwhile. Not, not happy to go in just yet. Again, exactly the same tactics as St John's. I know it's something that works all the time. I don't spend a couple of nights struggling like I have and then just go and try something completely different. I always stick to what I know works and this never ever fails. And it's looking likely that the move is gonna pay off. Yes, you beauty. And that is the good thing with linear fisheries. If it isn't happening on one lake, you can move and make something happen on another. What a start to the night. Got another bite, Cal. Well, no sooner had I got one in the net, just about to get the rod back out, and uh, typical of this place, this style of fishing, three rods on a spot, one goes nine times out of 10, another one will go quite quick. And uh, yeah, we're into another one. This time the right hand rod. So I've had a bite on the left and a bite on the right, which is a result because the middle rod is still out there, which gives me a line to cast my rod back out. Should I get both of these in? I'm gonna go next door a minute. All right. One of the things up here is the pegs are quite close together and um, just to make it a bit better for the guys either side, I've decided to stay in my chest waders up until I go to bed. So if I get a bite, I can do what I've done here, which is walk into their peg. And it just basically saves wiping everybody out, which I know is not ideal. But if you can do it this way around, it just means you don't wipe other anglers out. And it makes fishing a lot more enjoyable because if you get wiped out in the middle of the night, be a right mare. It's quite really weird now. Well, it's because I use such a long hook, because if the lead stays on, it feels like you're playing them on a zig. Sorry, boys. No, you're right, don't worry, mate. I'm going to take it for a walk a minute. Film the fish there. 
Taking us through the jungle? Are we in the Amazon? I like an adventure. Well, it's like drama, but he's coming in. Oh, excuse me, here we go. He's a bit bigger than the other one as well, come on. That was about that. Struggled, moved, caught one, caught the second one, about two minutes after. Major, major result. Oh, I'm glad I moved. Glad I moved. Let's have a look. Oh, sorry. Scott. That's the old camera, man. Oh, big deep fish. Help on him. You happy, lad? Oh, more than happy. How your night can turn around, eh? Good. <laughs> Well, like I say, when they're on the bait here, they can be on it in a big way. I've got the two rods back out that I'd had both of those fish on, literally flung them both back out. A couple more spawns over the top, just got the unhook out the back of the swim, ready to do the pictures and a bit of filming, and it's away again. Now I'm now in to carp number three in probably the last half an hour. So I can wipe the rod out. Having a day ticket moment here. Right. That's why I always fish with tight lines now. So I can see if the line starts moving, I know why it's moved. So both of my lines are moving to the right. The fish was to the left and now they're moving to the right. So that tells me that this fish has gone under them and to the right. But I now know this fish and I can see my lines are pulled up nice and tight up out the water, that this fish is underneath them out to the right. But I'm not gonna worry about passing the rod under it because it isn't gonna move the leads. I can keep control of it. Both of them lines, I've not, I've not caught them, even though I'm underneath them, I haven't caught them. So I'm gonna gently coax this fish back round and if I can't get it to come round, then I can simply open the clutch. In fact, I'll just, I'll do it actually. It's coming round now, here we go. company, free to crowd. Let's sort these out. That's well, about that then. The move has definitely, definitely paid off. This one here, a shade over 24 pound, but since landing this one, I've got two in the net that are considerably bigger. So I'm gonna slip this one back and I'm gonna show you the bigger ones. What a start. All right, let's get your big brother out. Now. 